G'day guys, welcome back. Hope everyone is having a great start to 2021. Um, if you're not, you know, hopefully it all gets better for you and onwards and upwards for everybody. Uh, guys, this is the video where the start of the competition is going to happen to give away the Ditex pressure transducer PDS500A, the basic kit. So stay tuned with us and obviously get on board and please enter because I want to give it away to someone who deserves it. So what we have today is a 2009 Suzuki Jimny 1.3 litre petrol. It has come in for a low power complaint. Customer is saying that it idles and slowly accelerates relatively normally, but um, under high power or up a hill, it won't go past 40 k's an hour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the e-scan on here. We are going to see if we've got any codes we do if we don't we're going to look at the pids we are going to go for a spin around the block and see what the o2 sensors do um and then obviously we're going to do a hopefully a, a ve test volumetric efficiency test and see what the engine is putting out and putting in because uh low power complaints you know usually low fuel delivery or an engine breathability problem so blocked intake poor reading math sensor blocked exhaust so we're going to chase those sort of three things first and then, you know, we'll decide what to do from there. So pretty terrible OBD spot under here, but luckily we've got our little ribbons on the e-scan. I'll get you under there, hopefully you can see that. Um, if you don't have these ribbons on your e-scan, you better make sure you get them because you can easily leave this thing behind because it's so little. So we're connected. Good news is, well not great news. E-scan tells us KWP 2000 communication, very slow bus, may not provide accurate results for E-scan info lights or sharpshooter testing. So it is what it is. Let's check um, orientation. So we know we are upside down. Uh, where are we? Let's go with A. I think let's go with A. Let's get this thing idling normally. Monitor's not complete. Let's go to DTCs quickly. System two, rich bank one. Excuse me about that. So system two, rich bank one. Let's just clear these codes quickly. I'm not really worried about that. Let's just read DTCs, permanent codes. Uh, let's go to PIDs. Hopefully you can see this. Um, our trims are pretty bad there. Our trims are pretty bad. So you would expect, I mean, even at idle, the trims are pretty bad. Short term is, I don't know if you can see that. Short term is three, hovering around 3%. Long term is negative 14, so it is taking fuel away. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go take it outside, see how it revs. Um, you would think if it was a fuel delivery issue, it would be adding fuel because it would be running out of fuel. So let's just reverse this out and go for a drive. I'm not going to go too far, I'm just going to reverse it out and put some wide open throttle in my car park area. Nice and safe, nobody's here, I'm the last one here for the day. So let's go out there, I might, uh, what I might do is get the pids up so we can see it better. Let me just take that off, yeah, let's put the sensors up there. Just get the, rid of these. Let's go to graphs. All right, we can see our short-term fuel trim there, and like, like it did warn us at the start, it might be a little bit slow, but let's go and give it some gas. Okay, guys, so we are on the screen now. As you can see, our oxygen sensor is pretty much warmed up. 
So what we're going to do is a bit of a wide open throttle run straight down the middle of the driveway and let's see what that O2 sensor does. So as you can see, it actually does go rich. Where our revs go up, right about there, we are rich. So we know it's not a fuel delivery issue. Well, another awesome way that we can have a quick look at this exhaust before we put this transducer in is with a thermal imager. So I just got this little FLIR 1 addition to my phone. I'll take you to that screen and we'll have a good look over the actual We'll have a good look over the actual um, exhaust and see if we can see anything funny going on. Let's go get down here, see if we can get under the car. There's the front of the pipe still. Hopefully you can, uh, you can see that pipe going through there. If we look at that cat now. Look at that cat. The front of it is 170-ish. Looks like a dead, deadish dark spot in the cat. And then obviously if we go back, we've still got some hot exhaust going through there. So, look, rough indication there's something funny going on there. That should be quite hot also. So, um, you know what, let's just get the transducer out and try it out. All right, so this is what's up for grabs today and over the next few weeks. So like I said uh, in my last video, if you saw that one, what we're gonna do is we are gonna raffle this actual sensor transducer off. Um, and how we're gonna do that is what I'd like you guys to do is subscribe to my channel. And then after this video is finished, please comment and say you have subscribed um, and anything that you'd like to say about the use of the sensor. Uh, if you find that it would be very helpful to any sort of diagnostics that you would do, love to hear a reason why. Um, and then what I will do is in the next couple of weeks, I will do a competition or well, that, that raffle, the YouTube comment picker. Um, and that will pick anyone that has commented on the video saying they've subscribed. And whoever wins that will be the absolute winner. And then we'll get in contact and... This will be boxed up, packaged away, and sent anywhere in the world to wherever you are. So stay tuned, guys. I'm going to hook this up to the car, and I'll show you the connections. So this is the basic setup. We've got number one plug out. We've got our transducer plugged in, and the cable's at the back. The first cable is the battery cable. goes straight to the battery. So obviously, we're powered off a battery. We don't need to charge it. Um, we can obviously use it directly off the battery, which is another fantastic thing about it. Don't have to worry about it being charged or not. And the second part of the cable is just the BNC, straight to the Pico. We got our first lead out with a spark plug tester connected to ground. So the spark has got somewhere to go and we don't ruin anything. And we have got the number one injector unplugged because we don't want to wash any fuel down there while we're doing this test. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to set up a custom probe for it in Pico 6. Uh, I don't really use Pico 6 anymore, I use Pico 7, but in Pico 7 currently, because it's still beta versions, you actually cannot uh, set custom ranges. So we couldn't set our scale correctly to, to get it right. I mean, we can do plus or minus 300 PSI, but you know we know we're not gonna to get to negative 300 PSI, so it's gonna be quite small in the scale. So, I'll set it up in Pico 6 and I'll show you how to do that. We'll, we'll screen record and I'll get the microphone on so you can have a better look at it. And once we get it set up, we'll start the car and we'll check it out. Click on A up here, three dots, new probe, next, use a custom defined below pressure, PSI, next. I'm going to use a recommended equation 14.5 so 50 in this one negative 14.5 on this one but apparently depending on how high you are from sea level that may change so you might have to tweak this number after but basically that's the base number to try so we're going to choose advanced setting custom probes manually 
you can set up more than one. What I'm going to do is, obviously I just want to divide, obviously we've got 10 actual divisions here. So I want to make it even, um, 20 PSI on each one. So I'm going to choose negative 20 PSI to 180 PSI and let's see how that looks. You can obviously add more depending on what you're doing, cranking compression, running compression, depending on the type of engine you, that you're using. So you can adjust that accordingly later. But let's get to 180. Let's go OK. Next. Uh, we can muck around with the filter frequency, but we won't to start with because we can always change that later anyway. Next, probe PDS 500A. That's all we need. Finish. OK. Let's go to channel A. Let's find our library PDS 500A. And as you can see, that didn't. Well, there we go. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So we're on zero there. We've got negative 20 here, 180 there. So how about I start this car up and let's see idling. So what we can do is we can obviously change the divisions here so we can see a bit of a better looking waveform there. So that's fine, that's what we're looking at. We can see our compression peaks, our exhaust, our intake. So what I'm going to do now is give it a bit of a snap throttle. Um, let's get a ruler down there while we're idling anyway. So we're on zero PSI. Let's give it a, oh, just around that mark. So let's give it a snap throttle. What I might do is stop recording. Start recording here. Give it a snap throttle now. All right, I'll go turn it off and I'll stop this capture. Sorry, I'm back here, just walking over BNC leads everywhere. So, as you can see here, we are basically on around the zero PSI mark at idle. But if we go back to where we were revving it, let's go back a couple of frames, see what we have. Can you see that, guys? Can you see that exhaust plateau rising? Let's get another ruler out. Let's see what we're rising to. Let's see what that mark is there. 13 PSI. So we definitely got a block to cat here. Um, you can clearly see it. The pressure changes in the transducer. It's really a clear way to, to show the customer that we do have back pressure here. And then obviously when it is fixed, we can obviously do the actual uh, known good after the, the post repair and then show the customer the before and after. It's always great to have that visual proof to, to show the customer the fault, and then obviously that the fix has actually rectified their concern. So let's go back to the car. So this is a little bit of an older car. I'm not sure if the customer's really gonna wanna spend too much money on it, whether they wanna buy a new cat, get a second hand cat, I'm not gonna, sh you know, we, we don't know. So we'll give the customer a call, give them the option, see what they like to do. If they do want to get the new cat installed, we will pull it apart and I'll show you guys um, the cat off. We'll have a look inside it and then we will do the post measuring with the transducer. So guys, like I said before, this transducer is getting given away to someone lucky who's looking for a transducer. Hopefully it really helps someone who actually really needs it, really wants it. Please subscribe and, and comment on the video like I asked in order to, to actually be in the running to win this. 
and um, good, good luck, best of luck guys. Hopefully you can see how valuable this tool is in, in regards to diagnosis. If you haven't got one, it's really a, a great tool that you should invest in if you've got a scope and all the accessories anyway. Um, but yeah, thanks, thanks for watching guys so far. Stick with us if the fix gets done. The thing I failed to mention guys is whenever you get a blocked cat, obviously something has led to that cat being blocked so or melted or something like that we know it is running rich um, when we do the replacement of the cat we're obviously going to check that check that straight away find out is it still running rich what's going on um, if it is then we need to solve that problem before the car goes out otherwise the same thing is probably going to happen again so always make sure if you do have a blocked exhaust it's happened for a reason make sure you check everything and make sure nothing has caused that or if something has you need to rectify that to stop it happening again all right, it's a bit of a shame guys, but we waited over a week for this new catalytic converter and it is completely wrong. It doesn't fit, it's the wrong size. So unfortunately I've had to send this car away to an exhaust shop. We've had to cut out the original catalytic converter and just replace it and weld one in the spot. So um, let's go have a look at what they've done. As you can see here, they've just cut the old one out, welded the new one in. Uh, unfortunately, they threw the old one away, so I can't show you what the front of it looked like, but they did say it was collapsed. So um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get in the car, check the scan tool, check the fuel trims and see, and make sure if there is anything that's causing the cat to break down. So we'll get you in there. As you can see, massive difference between that one and the old cat that had the dead spots in it so the thermal imager is uh, another handy tool that we can use to prove some issues going on just thought I'd show you for a little bit of reference um, to see if you compare to other ways of diagnosing blocked exhausts okay so hopefully you can see that but um, I've just gone for a drive around the block with the fuel trim chart on it and we just want to check fuel trims, make sure it's not running rich to see if it's causing a cat failure. But as you can see, most of the actual rev range is good and only towards idle we have a pretty bad rich condition. So let's get out there and have a look at this. All right guys, I just want to show you that we have rectified the running rich condition. Uh, as you can see, it was only uh, on the fuel trim table, it was only running rich actually at idle. So we ended up coming over here and just doing the usual checks for running rich and um, I was actually thinking about possibly doing a flow test on the injectors in case I had an injector leaking but I tried to back probe the injectors and the weather seals are just too hard to get into, they're absolutely rock solid at 200,000 kilometres so like Brandon Steckler says, low hanging fruit, so there's a low hanging fruit right there cleaned out the map it was dirty as now check out our fuel trims short term is 0.78 roughly and long term is negative 3.9 so that is acceptable for these sort of kilometers uh, you know in between the three and five percent mark absolutely normal as so I dare say that this is fixed and we're not going to have an issue with this catalytic converter again um, as you can see on this side, bank one, we've got our fuel trim and total fuel trim and our center all lit up green so we know that our control is perfectly good now. So the next thing we're going to do now, just to prove you 100%, is we're going to get the uh, Ditex pressure transducer back in number one and measure the exhaust back pressure again, just to show you an after capture of what the new cat looks like. Alright, we are on and connected, ready for the post repair check so let's just start this up and as you can see here yeah, we can change these divisions just to get this better on the screen on that it's a little bit of um, noise there which we can filter out but we're not worried about that now we just want to do the quick quick test for exhaust back pressure that's done let's turn it off so let's go back to where we revved it let's uh, go through the screens as you can see here this is where we're revving it let's just bring that 
curse it down and look at the PSI. Hopefully you can see that. It's about, you can see there, 2 PSI, which is very normal, 2 to 3 PSI when you're revving the engine. So don't worry about all these spikes there, that's just noise which you can filter out anyway. I just haven't played with the filter yet. But that is it. That is done. That's how we use the Ditex pressure transducer. It has fixed the car. We've fixed the fuel trim issue so we know this isn't going to happen again to the new cat. Uh, there you go. Fantastic tool. Make sure you comment at the bottom to say that you have subscribed. Subscribe and comment to say that you have subscribed. And uh, within the next week or two, hopefully within two, or two weeks or so, I will post a video on the winner of the transducer tool. Thanks for watching, guys.